I'm Dennis Politz. Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. In this video we will be continuing our discussion of the mind and in particular we will be considering the question of whether the mind is a computer or alternately whether a computer can think. Last time we considered whether the mind is just a bit of complex physics and we found that it was not physics because physics abstracts away all of the contextual details when it fixes on the quantifiable aspects of matter. Once these details are abstracted away, and they include our subjectivity as knowing subjects, once these details are abstracted away, all of the data in the context is gone. It is simply not there, and so physics cannot reconstruct the context which has been discarded in its abstractions. That means that physics doesn't have the data to construct a model of mind. In addition, the idea that the mind is a bit of physics is unfalsifiable. For a hypothesis to be scientific, it has to be testable it has to be falsifiable. There has to be some prediction that it makes that can be tested experimentally and confirmed or rejected. Because the brain is so complex, it is beyond our ability to make predictions about behavior from first principles. Thus, the idea that physics can explain the mind is an untestable belief and not a scientific hypothesis. Previously, I've suggested that the mind is not just a computer or data processing subsystem, but involves two systems, a data processing subsystem, which is basically the brain, and an intentional subsystem, which is aware of some of the contents processed by the brain, and which also provides direction through acts of will. In this video, we will be considering the case for the mind being nothing more than a computer or data processing system. I'm going to ask a very basic question. There is one thing that every mind should be able to do, and that is to know things. So the question is, what do computers know? Let's take a look. Computers have components that can have two states. They can be lit or unlit. They can be open or closed. The current can be flowing through them or not. The charge might be positive or negative. The magnetic field might be up or down. But whatever it is, there are two states, and each element that can have two states represents one bit. A computer state is made up of some combination of bit states, and it represents some piece of information. In my little model, there are four bits, and each is represented by being either magenta or turquoise. Each combination represents some information, let's say a number, and so our question is, can the computer know what number it's representing? Let's stop the computer and ask it what it means. To answer this question, we need to know whether the computer is counting with the lowest position being 1, so that we have 1, 2, 4, and 8, or whether it's starting with the highest position being 1, so we have 8, 4, 2, and 1. We also need to know whether magenta means 1 and turquoise means 0, or whether magenta means 0 and turquoise means 1. Since we don't know what the right answer is, we need to work through all the combinations. So let's start by assuming that magenta means 1 and that the 8 is at the bottom. If we do that, then we find that we have 0 at the top position, 2, and then 0, and 0 again for a sum of 2. But what if we're wrong and the computer means for us to take turquoise as 1? Then when we add up the numbers, we find out that what it really means is not 2, but 13. But maybe we're wrong and we're counting in the wrong direction. And that's the top position that represents 8 and the bottom position that represents 1. If that interpretation is right, then the value it's trying to tell us is 11. If we look at the last possibility, we see that what the computer might really mean is 4. 
Now, an important thing to remember is that no matter what the computer means, its electronics operated in exactly the same way whether we interpret the value to be 2, 13, 11, or 4. So a computer doesn't know what its value is, rather it depends on a human interpreter to assign a meaning to its state. A mechanism that operates the same way regardless of meaning doesn't really mean anything. And if it doesn't have any intrinsic meaning, it can't know what it means. So computers don't think. In the same way, if the brain is just a computer, it can't think either. In order to be able to think, we need to have something more than a computational ability, more than the brain as a data processing organ. We need an intentional subsystem to assign meaning. And that brings us back to the two subsystem mind. Next time, we will continue our discussion of the mind and computers by looking at the differences in the way in which the mind and computers signify meaning. Thank you for watching, and please leave comments.